Kaikoto Katoa no Mai Haramaiki inside Nepal, Koravinda Hunia Toku Ingwa. And joining me today is former Silver Ferns captain Adine Wilson and Sky Sport commentator Jenny Woods. Kia ora Kia ora Rev. Tanakwe. Kia ora all pai to korero. Jen, look on that note, we're celebrating this week. It's Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori where we celebrate our beautiful Indigenous language Te Reo Māori. Unfortunately though for us Aucklanders, we're having to do it in level four with the announcement coming that lockdown has been extended for another week. Before we get into this though and how it affects our great game and upcoming test matches, Korua, how are we coping in lockdown? Adine, this is, we're getting used to this virtual set now, aren't we? We certainly are. I want to go back to a real set that I can actually see you guys. You were sitting next to me, but oh, look, it's crazy times. And when I think of, you know, potentially Jen and I were supposed to be flying down to Christchurch to be part of this English series. So I feel like um, that's slipping away from us a little bit. The fact that we can't go, but look, it'll be awesome to get that underway. But yes, feeling a little bit sorry for myself here in Level 4. I want a coffee. I want a takeaway coffee. Yes, yeah, so the coffee doesn't worry me so much, Adine, but I must admit, I've had enough of working from home. Um, I mean, cool that I'm able to do it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not quite the same. I miss the buzz of a newsroom and all that sort of thing that goes with it. But um, look, small mercies. I mean, we sort of jazzed things up a bit this morning with our walk. We walked the other way. <laughs> It looks so different walking the other way, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, on that note, in these COVID restrictions, another announcement came out that the Constellation Cup won't be happening. We don't know when they're going to postpone it until. But Wahinema, what are our thoughts on that, that, you know, the Silver Ferns won't be facing Australia in the near future? Jenny? I know. Look, I think it's a blood... Well, of course it's disappointing. I think it's probably even more disappointing for Australia uh, if you're in their shoes. I mean, they've barely played since that World Cup. Uh, I think they'll be very much looking forward to seeing England get there. But, you know, there's always a, a silver lining. We get, you know, three more tests against the men. And, you know, they've been our lucky charms before big uh, tournaments before. So, you know, not bad. Adine, how imperative is it to get, I mean, this could possibly be um, the Silver Ferns' last chance to face Australia before the Commonwealth Games. We just don't know how COVID-19 is going to roll out. Awesome that the Ferns are going to get to play the men's, but there's nothing like that international experience. Playing different styles that you're going to come up against at the Commonwealth Games. And that is the crazy thing. The Commonwealth Games are going to come around so quickly. ANZ, it starts a little bit earlier next year to accommodate for that. So it doesn't leave much of a window for any other international opportunities. But I have no doubt Netball New Zealand will be scanning the globe and seeing, you know, COVID um, restrictions permitting, MIQ permitting, that they can get that really, really important international netball. Yeah, when you talk about scanning the globe, Adina, and I did a little bit of scanning myself, South Africa, they've had a few tests against African nations. Jamaica haven't played. They've got a, a tri series coming up uh, very, you know, next month, I think, against um, South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. But, uh, you know, and England, obviously, they're having going to have a good run through New Zealand and Australia. So um, I guess you just take what you can get and, and be grateful for it. Most definitely, Jen. And we can't forget after the World Cup. Nolene Todua and the Silver Ferns team touting the New Zealand men's for helping them best prepare for a World Cup. So although Australia is not happening right now, you know, it probably is the best plan B. But let's look at what is happening. The good news that the Silver Ferns will be facing England this weekend. And Dean, you brought up something quite interesting that Jenny and yourself can't make it down to Christchurch because of the level four restrictions. Where does that leave our Auckland based players? That is a really good question, and we just don't know. There's been no official word of if they have or haven't got an exemption to go, and that's quite crazy to think because you potentially are missing some of the big names. In fact, you're missing, you know, Gina, the new captain, if she can't get out. You're missing the vice captain, and Sully Fitzpatrick throw on there as well. I think another couple that potentially are still in Auckland, Peter Toyava and Grace Nweke. So, I mean, these are big names. I was thinking about no okay so what team would I put out if I can't have you know Fitzpatrick at the back and Wecky in the goal circle and all that sort of thing but of course um there 
are other players, and that's the reason they're there. You have, you know, Kelly Jury at goalkeep. And then, of course, I went to Maya Wilson, and I thought, no, hang on, she lives in Auckland. So that's not a solution. But, you know, there's, there's Tiana Maturo, there's um, Tapia Selby Rickett. You know, there will be a team. I think she's got a squad of 17 players. Uh, thankfully, they're not all Aucklanders. See, I had a corridor with Maya this week for Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori, Jen, and she's in Wellington with her partner and his family, so she'll definitely be down oh, there, I'm guessing. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Helpful. Good but to you know. think about... Yeah, exactly. But you think about the makeup of the Silver Ferns and, you know, having the likes of, you know, Peta Toyava worked so hard to get back into that squad and now she could be left out, you know, due to a technicality. And Grace Nowicki, you know, this was the time for her to hit the ground running and really see how she can make an impact on the big stage, Adine. No, it's so hard and that's why I feel just so gutted for them. And, and when I say that, we, like I said, we don't know. Maybe they have got these exemption now and they're flying down. But if they were to miss one or even all three tests, it's really hard when that has been your goal. You work so hard during the ANZ. In fact, you work so hard over your career to wear that black dress and to have that potentially stripped away from you over something that's completely out of your control, you know, mentally that must be pretty hard, hard to take. So, you know, that's a great thing with Knowles and Deads and the support group and the Silver Ferns. I know they have been in a lot of contact with these players, but with all the players. And I think that's really important well, for anyone in any situation, right, at this moment when we're in level four, keeping those connections, keeping some positivity, keeping some normality definitely helps with the everyday challenges. But, I mean, you know, you think about who was the ultimate no-show on, on the England tour last year. Jess Thirlby, the coach, couldn't get on the plane. So, you know, th we've we've had something like, like this before. But I think, fingers crossed if we, as I say, if we get out of this level, everyone will be able to be there. And another thought that I had too is when it comes to the men's uh, series in, you know, what, a month later, um, they're going to be a very different looking men's side because a lot of those blokes live in Australia. So they won't be there. Yes, that's very true, Jenny. I hadn't really thought of that. I, isn't Junior Levy the, the very tall shooter based in Australia? He is. And I think there are about, I think five of them were, were across the Tasman. So, um, you know, again, you can look at the positive side and think here here is an opportunity to, for us to see, you know, just how deep uh, the talent is in New Zealand men's netball. That's right. And also in mentioning that they're also looking for a new coach and the squad should be uh, released by the end of the week so they can get preparations underway for their side. But one person who may be rubbing her hands together if there are players missing from the Silver Ferns is that of former Silver Fern, Liana Leota. She's the new assistant coach for the England Roses, and we caught up with her earlier. Hi, thank you for having me. Now, look, Liana, congratulations on your appointment coming through as a technical advisor and now assistant coach um, for the England Roses tour. Look, we know that you are still playing netball at an elite level. So have these coaching opportunities come as something you've been working towards or an opportunity that you couldn't pass up? Um, I think a bit of both. I think um, I'm on the older end of the scale. So definitely looking at that transition and if coaching was, you know, an option that I wanted to take. So with Stars this year, I was injured. Um, so I had that opportunity on the sideline to really like invest my time in coaching and not playing um so I really did enjoy my time there and then um yeah this appointment came up I thought why not you know it's in it's in my backyard um if I got it that would be awesome if not it would just be a huge um learning experience so yeah no I'm just testing the waters at both <laughs> you're Liana how did how did it come about had you made the approach or did Jess Thilby approach you yeah no so like with netball, obviously, everything's advertised, so it comes through all our clubs, um, all our franchises, so I knew it was about. Um, but, yeah, for me, it was like I had sat out half the season coaching with stars and really enjoyed it and knew that, you know, my time playing wouldn't be that long. So this was an opportunity to learn at the highest um, environment but also still be able to play at the same time. So, they've, yeah, they've been really supportive because 
coming next year, I'll still play for stars, but I'm still going to have that coaching role and how I can balance that. And of course, in this crazy time, Liana, a lot of it is so dependent on these, you know, such strict restrictions. How have you found with your, you know, your first um, burst of coaching being under such tough regulations in terms of being an MIQ and trying to deliver this international training program? Yeah, I think for us like in the UK, we've had 18 months of lockdown. I think the first when it first hit in 2019, I was at home with my children homeschooling for nearly eight months. Um, so we've already we've already been through where you are. And I think we're coming on the other side where we can see light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting out and about. So I think for us, it was it's the norm now. Um, we've just accepted what we have to do. I think MIQ was pretty tough only because we were isolated in single rooms. Um, so we're only we're in our rooms pretty much 20 hours of the day allowed outside for hour three to four times a day and uh, we had no netballs we had to use tissues as you saw um socks tennis balls if the girls were lucky enough to have it so we had to be really creative in that aspect but in saying that the girls were awesome they were doing up to four to five k's in in a 10 by 10 meter room flipping beds up you know um so i had to take my hat off to them because if i was still playing internationally there was no way I would jump on the court, but they're just like ready to go. That they've, they've come to every challenge, ready to to keep grinding and go forward. So yeah, I take my hat off to them. Leanna, not only are you a Kiwi, your silver fern number one forty one. Have you thought about you know when it's time when it's game one and yeah. all the teams are lining up to sing that anthem and you're mm. going to be on the side of the England Roses? Yeah, so uh, I think this has been the hardest thing. I was having uh, tea with my husband on the coffee table just like chatting generally he's like what are you going to do are you going to sing or what, like what what's your thoughts and my kids turn around like what mum you're not gonna sing and I was <laughs> like well I haven't really thought about it and they're like because they live and breathe like they want to represent England they wake up when it's the Commonwealth Games Olympics they cheer for England I would normally be cheering for New Zealand so for them, like, they sing God Save the Queen at school. They want to represent England, England, like football. They love football. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a hard one. I'm still in two frames of mind. But I think for me, one, being a mother, being a role model, you know, that's going to be the key thing. They want me, they, they are invested in England. Red, red blood runs through them. But then also, as an athlete, being in a team, you want to give your all, you know, you've put, got to put your foot forward to know that your team's, they've got, you've got their back and you'll go to war for, with them. So I, th I think, I think that makes the decision for me myself. Now, we've been lucky in that we've seen quite a few of these players um, through watching the Super League and also a fair chunk of them were, of course, out here 12 months ago. But who do you think, you know, who are the players we really have to watch out for? I think, yeah, they all... They're all growing and developing at different rates. I think Serena, like, in my eyes, has, like, really blown me away in terms of her as an athlete, as a leader, and just how she continues to evolve. She always, what can you take, what can you tell me? What can I do different? Did you see something? Um, so, yeah, for someone who's at the top of her game to always be evolving, wanting to ask questions, um, she's a huge one for me. Uh, definitely the Aussie girls, because I haven't had a chance with them. So the Jeevers, the, the Helen Housebys and Nat Haythorn Thwaites and the Joe Hartons and the Stacey Francis Feynman. I think like I'm really looking forward to see how they come into the group, what they offer and just how that vibe really goes. So yeah, I think Serena was definitely like, she's blowing me out of the water. <laughs> that word tanga comes to mind when you talk about being connected and, and playing as one Liana of course you hail from Ngāti to Wharetoa Ngāti uh, Maniapoto um, and it is uh, Tuiki o Te Reo Māori which is something that you know all of Aotearoa are celebrating today I was just wondering is there anything that you perhaps try to impart on the English team while you're here in New Zealand in terms of um, kaupapa or reo or anything like that and perhaps your family as well yeah, I think, um, and this probably come up when I went for my job interview, I said the key thing for uh, for me for a successful team is that connection, knowing where you come from and who you are, um, being able to be 
connected as as one and not as individuals so for me it was that big family orientated we do everything together um it's not individual so for me that was was huge coming into this job I said you know identity is key and knowing where you come from and who you are how sets that foundation for you to put your platform for performance to go on top so that was one thing that I was like I'm going to I want to bring and I want to implement it but then it was already here they, there's little bits and pieces it's just how they do it a little bit differently to um the might be Maori and being back in New Zealand so yeah just trying to influence that way um that family first approach but then also when we've been here um I really wanted to get them like to try a hangi or get some like kiwiana food so um if the opportunity we've got an opportunity at one of the schools for a hangi but it's just whether it fits in with our timing so that would be awesome I noticed you mentioned in one of those answers just before, over the next couple of years, how long is your contract? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my contract is till after the South Africa World, Cup, oh, World Champ. So, yeah, I think all of us are signed for the two years, so we've got time to grow and develop. Um, so it's not just a short stint. So, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Locked in, uh, clever to lock you in. Look, you're back on New Zealand soil, no doubt. Absolutely can't wait to see some of your family. And you spoke about a hungry then, but is there anything else that you can't wait to eat or see or do while you've got this little stint back here at NZ? Oh, I really don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, everything in moderation I've said and I like a mince and cheese pie like, I'm not going to have that till the end of the tour like um, seafood um, that's huge on the list but yeah I'm trying to be sensible because I know if I eat everything that I want so I'm going to go to Australia 10 kgs heavier <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora mō tērā kōrero Liana Leota I'm just trying to get over the fact that that's my first ever interview with Liana Leota, and I'm a little bit starstruck. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> but oh, how, she's a special, how amazing is it to see her back on home turf? She's a special lady, right? I was so fortunate to play with her um, down in the Sting Steel days. And, you know, she's just that player, that real Kiwi player with that flair, with all those little bits and pieces that she throws in that has that Kiwiana flavour about it. And I just so cool to think she left you know 10 11 years ago she's still playing netball she now has five children she looks exactly the same and all she wants when she gets home is a mince and cheese pie so you know awesome to hear from her <laughs> Yeah, I think they must be a pretty impressive couple. I just remember when she was straddling the globe, you know, st came back, she was playing for the Pulse. There were children on the other side of the of the world and she just seemed to cope. She was still playing great netball. And so, um, I, you know, I fear she'll be a very good coach. <laughs> I don't think this is good for us. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to see that she's keeping that, you know, that Aotearoa, that New Zealand, Fano tanga flavour that she did uh, mention before and also you know we've mentioned it before it's te wiki o te reo Māori and in celebrating our language we are very very lucky to have some gifted players within the ranks of the Silver Ferns who are fluent in te reo Māori one of them being Te Paia Salbi Rickett. Uh, ko Te Paia Salbi Rickett tēnei, uh, ko tōku reo ne te waku o tainui, ko tōku ihi no ngā pai maunga o tararua, ko tōku wehi no te awo hoki o um, first of all, I'm so intrigued as to, you know, your te reo Māori journey growing up in total immersion Māori. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I've, te reo Māori was my first language. Um, we, I grew up through going through kuhanga reo. Um, we only spoke Māori at home. Kuhanga reo, kura kaupapa, um, just speaking Māori every day. Um, my, with my mum, she... Um, she didn't grow up speaking te reo Māori. It was sort of taken away from her generation and the one in my grandmother's generation. So it was a it was a huge goal for her to bring that back for us. So she learnt um, te reo Māori in the 80s. And um, yeah, so made sure that we all grew up in te reo Māori, which we're really, really lucky and grateful for. Um, spoke, yeah, went through right through to Whareketa at the end of high school. 
but then after high school I moved down to Dunedin for um, university and there weren't as many speakers down there unfortunately so um, it's been really hard um, you know in my adult life finding um, having people to speak to on a daily basis especially in, in Dunedin and, and here in Christchurch as well um, but I love going back home being around my family or my cousins who speak te reo Māori um, all day every day um, and also being in um, a team with my sister for the for the last few years well not the last couple of years but when I was at the steel having her there um, to speak to has, was awesome too so yeah the last few years haven't been immersed in it as much as I would like to but um, this year I'm finishing off my I'm doing my postgrad teaching and um, have been working and doing my placements in Kura Kaupapa so this year I've been really lucky to be able to speak Māori a lot be around it be around te reo ona tikanga and that sort of stuff so yeah this year I've been really lucky to be able to and I feel like Mareo has sort of gotten a lot better since I've been around around all the kids and things like that so yeah really looking forward to finishing my degree and in the future hopefully teaching in you know full Māori immersion schools. How exciting is that <laughs> amazing story yeah. So just to think, you know, there's not many, you know, real speakers, you know, on our athletes in New Zealand. Talking about that and wanting to, you know, learn more to be able to teach tamariki, do you feel kind of a sense of responsibility being a fluent te reo Māori speaker? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been really cool to see more more athletes um, speaking Māori um, these days. Um, there's a few, there's a couple in rugby and there's a couple in netball now too. Um, there's... Tiana, she's a really um, big Te Reo Māori advocate um, in the Silver Ferns and, um, you know, TJ Pedernata and the rugby and things like that. So it's really cool to see it growing. So for me, coming from a small um, Māori community, I just want to show, you know, kids from small places or from where, you know, Kura Kaupapa that come through Kura Kaupapa, that there is a path, pathway and there are people that are like, you know, similar to them that speak Te Reo Māori and can excel in sport as well. So that's, that's the, um, a really big goal of mine. The Silver Ferns coaching unit are also quite proud, staunch Māori wahine. Um, talk about being in an environment like that, and is it something that's perhaps perhaps quite familiar for you? Yeah, it is familiar for me because I grew up doing these things every day. So it wasn't, you know, that's not mainstream to me. Um, that's sort of just normal. But um, going into some environments, it wasn't. So it's been really awesome um, in the last few years. Um, and Amelia rand has been a big a big one pushing that as well um just bringing more te reo maori into our you know meetings we're doing karakia we're doing um you know we're doing waiata we're doing pōwhiri and whakato and things like that when we're welcoming people into the environment so and people are getting the other girls are getting much more comfortable and they're learning you know the correct pronunciation they're really getting amongst it when we're doing waiata and things like that so it's been really awesome to see everyone um buy in and um really yeah really embrace it you know, to a lot of people, te reo Māori is, is just a language, a means of communication. But, you know, te ao Māori, we know it's a little bit more than that, you know, and, and what it represents. Yeah. What does te reo Māori mean for you? Um, it's it's pretty much everything. It's um, it's all I really know, you know. Um, growing up, manaakitanga, you know, rangatiratanga, all that sort of thing is um, was, you know, instilled in us from such a young age. So, it's yeah it's pretty much my philosophy on a lot of things that I do um and you know you just feel it when when you have people come in and we all do a water or things like that together you can just feel you can just feel it and how how amazing and how you, you can just feel the culture within you so it's really good um being able to do this stuff more and more often um yeah just bringing th things that are normal for me that's always been normal for me just bringing it into things that haven't usually, you know, things that haven't in the past been in the netball and environment been normal, to normalise it now, it's just really, yeah, it's a really good feeling and it, it just makes me really happy. <laughs> I don't know if that answered the question. It does, no, it does indeed. It, it, you know, it yeah. encompasses a whole lot of other things other than just the language itself. And we know that, yeah. but it's sometimes hard to explain um, to yeah. other people who may be outside of that. Um, yeah. Look, you're down in Ōtautahi at the moment in Christchurch. You haven't had yeah. the worry of travel or, or trying to, you know, be available, waiting for these levels to change um, for the upcoming series against England. Mm -hmm. How have you found preparations this time around? I mean, we talk about Māori dim, tanga, you know, working in a rōpū, but this time around working individually, um, probably, I'm guessing, a lot through Zoom. 
Yes, um, lots of Zoom meetings, like literally every day we're having a meeting for if it's analysis, if it's um, catching up with people in our areas, if it, we've even been doing a lot of our um, training sessions via Zoom. So that's been really interesting for us, um, but we just had to get on with it. Um, it has been tough doing, doing it alone because we got given pretty intense training programs heading into this and having to do it on your own has been pretty tough. But, um, you know, England got here a couple of days into lockdown, so we knew they were here. So we, we were hoping that these games would still go ahead. So that's been really good motivation to get out there and do the training and staying connected um, as much as we can, you know, over Zoom or, or um, messaging within our units and things like that. So even though we haven't been connected like Kanohi to Kanohi, it's we've still been staying connected like as much as we can. Um, we're lucky these days with, with, with the internet because if it happened, a few years ago, well, you know, 10 years ago, it would be pretty tough. But, yeah, we've been pretty lucky to still be um, able to stay connected, um, even though we're sort of out there training on our own. So very true. Te Paia, thank you so much for joining us this week. All the very best for the upcoming series and for getting your tohu to become a kayako down the line. Thank you very much. Nga mahi. Ai wahine mai, and that is the most beautiful thing about Te Reo Māori, isn't it? It's the way that it unifies our nation. Kaua e ware ware fano kia kaha te reo Māori. Do not forget, be strong in your efforts and trying your best to use te reo Māori. Dean, Jenny, it's been a pleasure as always. Jenny, how did you find our virtual set this week? Well, oh, well, remarkably easy really, but I feel given that it's virtual, I should sort of put my hands together and go poof in a puff of smoke and I'll be gone. But um, <laughs> I don't think it happens quite like that, but uh, nga mihi kakite. Oh, nice one, Jen. Oh, I love you, Jen. You're just fabulous. <laughs> she, she snuck out a pink hat before. I thought you were going to say, I think we should wear pink hats or something on the virtual set as well. So uh, maybe next week. But awesome, Rav. Beautiful. Thanks again for an awesome week of, um, of chat. Of kōrero. Of course. And we will be coming back to that pink hat chat sometime in the future. But for now, wahine ma and to you at home. Remember, if you do have any kōrero comments, questions that you'd like to ask us, please feel free to drop us a comment. For now, though, we will see you next week. Hey, kona mai.